So as you can see, I've got some imperfect paper here just to practice and review, warm up our pin drawing hands. So let's take a little jump down memory lane. Last week, we were drawing that tree house and we went over how to make a limb go forward, go back, go sideways, go up and down. So let's go ahead and just remember how we did that. If we have a cylinder, we'll have one open end or one oval end and then one closed or just curved end. And when we want this to come toward us, that oval has to get rounder. So I'm going to draw another oval. It's slightly rounder and then maybe one that's a circle. Put on those side lines there. And remember, this curve has to match this curve. If I do it flat, it's not going to give that illusion. I have to take this curve, copy it over there. When it's coming straight at us, we're going to have more taper in our side lines, and I have to match that curve nice and round there. So here's a little pop quiz. You want this branch to move downward. How do we make it move downward? We would have to start getting that oval to squash again. And while it's pointing down, you want it to swing out to the left. Let's say you want it to go this way. And you want it to go even further that way. So you have to really squish that oval. like so. Next time someone uses the last of the toilet paper, save that little cardboard cylinder inside. It's a great little study if you want to wiggle it around and see how that circle changes its uh, shape to an oval as it goes around. Today we're doing a witch's house. Let me show you a little preview. Back up. Ooh, something like this. We're going to do a roof based on a witch's hat. Let me darken that up a little bit so you can see. And I've got a couple of areas where we're going to put in some extras. So we've got like a mailbox, we've got a weather vane, I've got the broom sitting there, the design of the lights, those are all things that you can change. So we'll just go over a couple of the little of the steps we take to make these different objects and like in perspective. So especially the weather vane. The weather vane is the trickiest. So we'll go ahead and practice that before we use it in our actual drawing. So just from the top view, whoops, let me focus my camera a bit more. And here we go. So we know from a top view, like a compass, that a weather vane has those crossing prongs so that we know where north and south and west and east are. Oops, I got a ding on my phone. Is that Stephanie? Yep, having trouble signing in. Did anybody else have trouble signing in? Nope. Nope. Let me just tell her Kristen and Martha are here. So we want to, let's make this 3D so it's easier to rotate. So we've got like two two boards there. We want to rotate it up. You can think of it as that circle. And we know that we want to rotate things up. We have to squash that circle into an oval. So now we put these crossbars into this oval. I like to do it a little bit more like an X just so I can keep things clear. And that oval will tell you how 
long they should be. And then they'll have some height to them if you're doing it out of like planks of wood. I should use two different colored pens, I think, for when I do my plotting and when I do my actual line. Let me grab another pen. So I've got those pointed like that, but that's if we're looking down. If the horizon line is here, we can see the top of things. Most of the time, your weather vane isn't going to be that low. So we're going to have to draw it actually just this way, where we can see the bottom of it. But we'll keep our paper right side up and just practice it. So I've got my squashed oval again. Do it in pink this time so it doesn't clutter it up so much. And I've got my crossbars. And these could be cylinders if you wanted instead of like the planks of wood. We do some skinny cylinders. So we can see the bottom of this and we can add our little letters for which direction is pointing. I'm just going to stick it on there. Let's say north is that way, south is that way. We'll put east over here. And west over here. So there it is flying in the sky and we need to stick it on a vertical pole so it's not just flying in the sky. Yeah, I've got my pole here. So we have to decide which would be the oval end and which would be the closed curved end. Since it's above the horizon line, if my horizon line is here, that means we cannot see the top of things. So this would be the rounded side. And this will probably stick into the roof. But let's say it wasn't stuck into the roof, we would see the open side, the bottom side right there. Stephanie is in the process of restarting her computer, so let's practice the mailbox real quick. Same kind of a thing, I'm sure you're all very good at drawing a mailbox, something like this, where we're looking at it from above, and it's on its little square post. Let me do that out real quick. So we've got our regular mailbox when the horizon line is above it and we can see the top. But what happens when that mailbox goes above that horizon line and for some reason is up on the roof where I guess the messenger owls or something can, uh, can grab it? We're going to see the bottom part of that mailbox. So let's go ahead and draw our post. That's three lines from my post. If this were a cylinder, just like we did on the vein, we'd only see that one curve, but because this is a piece of wood that has angles, I'll put my little angle up there. I need to draw the bottom of my mailbox in the same parallel direction as my post. I'm going to try to follow those lines as much as possible. I'll show you what happens when you don't do that if you have your post like this. And then you try to draw your rectangle like that. It just looks weird. You just kind of break the illusion. So whatever angle this post is at, that's what the mailbox has to be also. Get those parallel lines in there. And we can draw our little arch on the top. Or you can do a square mailbox if you prefer. You just follow your lines again. Same thing with the top of this mailbox. We have to take that edge that we already made and just draw it again. So 
there, Stephanie. Let's let her in. And that little flag that says, oh, there's a piece of mail in here. Has to follow those same lines. Like that. So that's a nice little review. We can get rid of this piece of paper, or if you have a blank side, you keep it for next week. And we'll save some trees. We'll grab my good piece of paper. So on my practice one or my demo piece, I drew it a little bit big. I didn't fit, or I couldn't get my witch hat as tall as I wanted. So I'm going to draw it a little bit smaller this time around. If I can get camera and my pages all set up here. Here we go. So remember, we're going to draw nice and lightly so that we can darken the lines that we want to keep later. So from the top of my paper, or maybe an inch below the top of my paper, that'll be the top of the roof. I'm just going to put a dot for right now. So I know that's as tall as I want my roof to be. And then right at the base of the cone, not at the brim part of the hat, but right at the base of the cone, I'll put in a curved line where I want that to be. This curve doesn't matter. You can see this uh, roof is wibbly and wobbly and going all over the place. So we'll just get a curve going right there. And then lightly, so lightly, just dragging your pen across your paper, you're going to give a curved line on one side, curved line on the other, or you can change the angles like that. Think of that witch hat shape. So, so lightly. Then we'll go ahead and extend that brim so, so lightly. And for this final edge, we're going to do a little bit of a reverse curve. You can see it's curving down in front of the house, and then it's going to wrap around and go up. So from this part of the hat, I'm going to start with a curve where it's curving around. And then we'll go down and connect it right up. And you can put in your walls. And if you remember way back to week one, you can curve your walls any way you want to. Give them little squiggles. You can get fatter as you go down or skinnier as you go down. Doesn't really matter. Then we're going to zoom in a little bit and work on this whole door entryway section here. We've got another little part of the roof that's going to stick out kind of dormer style. So I'm going to pick a spot somewhere in the middle of my hat on the brim here and just come up into a little peak. Back up so Stephanie can see. <laughs> there we go. Hi, Sammy. So we've got our brim coming around, goes up now, but we need this little triangular piece to show that side of the roofing. So I'm going to make a curve right on the top. Just slightly come down, make that triangle shape. Then we're going to give it a little bit of thickness. So I'll give it another set of lines coming down. And just flow right back into the roof there. And then our door is going to be set back a little bit. So this part of the roof will overlap. So I'm going to just draw my door coming down this way. Draw it across the bottom. 
Then you can make it curved on top, or you can just make it a rectangle. That's up to you. I'm going to make my little curved door there. And we've got more stairs. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> so we can't see the top of any of these stairs except for the last one. That should tell you something about the horizon line, that the horizon line is happening somewhere between these two steps because you couldn't see the top and then you could. But that makes drawing stairs really easy because all we have to do is extend this line out and go down. There's the first step. And we'll do it again. Extend that line out. There's the next step. And if you did these perfectly straight and even, that would be boring and not whimsical at all. So every once in a while, just on purpose, you can tilt or curve a step. You can make some taller, some shorter. Add some whimsy. And then for your last step, you're going to make just a partial rectangle. There's the top of that last step right there. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see a little better. And then there's the height of the step right there. Instead of drawing the bottom of the step, we're going to add just little squiggles for grass lines or something that's covering it. Not a perfect straight line. We want that to look like the ground. And then we'll draw some railing on either side. You can draw whatever kind of railing you want. I'm going to do this little squiggly type step, starting with a little swirl. Don't worry if it doesn't touch the edge of your stairs. You can fill those in later. I'm just going to do a little swirl, little swirl. I'll try to do a similar shape on the other side, coming up, going down, maybe it goes behind that stair, that's okay. If you want to give it a little thickness on top, you can do another line coming down. If you don't want to, I didn't do it in my first one, so that's fine too. And I'm just going to connect those two swirls. And again, on this bottom edge, I'm not showing where the staircase meets the ground. I've got some little bumps representing foliage happening down there, so I'm just going to add a little couple of bouncy strokes. Something's growing in there, I don't know what. You want to make use of your overlapping, make sure there's some in front of another one. And your size, I've got kind of one big clump of bushes and the rest are all just little. Then what's ever left between your stair rail and that bush, you can fill in with some lines going up and down or diagonal or whatever you want. I like it up and down just because it shows elevation and we're going up. Then you can always come back and finish off your stair lines if they don't connect to the railing. We'll just come back and fill those in. And for the door detail, you can put a long handle like that, or you can do a circle handle, or you can do no handle, that's up to you. I was putting a little doodle of that like middle piece that comes across most wooden doors, 
in like castle designs and dungeons and stuff. So you can put a little thing like that if you want. Go a little fancier this time. And then we're going to go ahead and add what we can see on the inside of what's holding up this roof. So I've got a couple of little just crossbars. Probably don't even make sense. Any architect would go, what is going on there? But it's okay, because we're drawing silly houses anyway. So I've got a couple of crossbars on the inside. And also one coming off the edge of my roof there. And then I also stuck in a couple vertical lines just here and there. I shouldn't say vertical. They're following that same diagonal of the roof. So I put a couple in there. If you mess up or you don't like that, just color it all in black. That will be your shadow. You can do that too. Next, we're going to add some windows. So we have our wall here, and again, you can put windows wherever you want them to be. I'm going to sketch out the outline shape first. You can do arched windows, or round windows, or square windows. That's up to you. You can have one cat-shaped if you want. If they're close to a wall, remember it's good to follow that same curve. I've got a curved wall over here, so I'm going to make a curved window. Hi, Mickey. How are you? Hi. I'm, I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Okay. So then we have to add the thickness to this window so we can show that there are cutouts. And there's something about that if it's on the right side of the house, it'll be on the right. So easy to remember for windows. And if it's on the left side of the house, it'll be on the left. And if it's smack dab in the middle, You'll see it all the way around, but we've got our door in the middle, so that's probably not going to happen. And then you can add whatever little window details you want. Just remember that if you're doing your crossbars, let's see, you've got your round window here. Whoops. Instead of having the bars stop at the first line, like that, which looks a little funny. You want to make sure that they go into the thickness part. I should do it over here. Instead of stopping like that, they're going to go all the way into that thickness. So it looks like it's in a crossbar there. You don't have to do crossbars. You can do like the letter Y. That's a style of window. Or you can draw a tiny little shutter, just like a little door. That's something you can do too. The window is closed. Then we'll put in this big wiggly chimney. You can put it on either side of the house, I just happen to have it on the right side. And very lightly, I'm going to start sketching up kind of a zigzag, kind of curvy. You can have this go whichever way you want. We'll go all the way to the ground, though, and put some little grass down there. So there's my outline. But then I need my thickness. I need this side over here. So you can either draw it on the outside or you can 
divide your shape on the inside. That's up to you. If I like the thickness that it is right now, then I'll just go, okay, I'll come in here and I'll add that edge. If you've got the opposite, you go, oh, I wish I made my chimney a little bit thicker. That's okay. Just draw this line instead on the outside. We're going to see the underside of this section on top. So I'll draw my lines going upward. And then very, very important, you need to either copy this line or go, or go more tilted, but not less. Don't flatten out. That's this bottom area right here. And then we also need to draw the height. So I'll add some lines to make it tall. And these lines don't have to be straight. They can curve, they can tilt, they can do whatever they want because they're a whimsical house. But again, I have to either copy this one or go more vertical, not more horizontal. If you get a little confused, just take your pen and just lightly color in this shape right here, and that'll help it make more sense. We've got one more window to put in, and it's actually way up here in the top. Oftentimes with uh, these big peaked roofs, there's actually a room inside. Why waste the space, right? So I'm going to go ahead and stick a window near the edge here. You want to follow the edge of your roof, the edge of your hat. But here's something new. Because it's so up high, instead of seeing the bottom edge, let me zoom in. On these down here by the ground, we would show the bottom edge, but this one's way, way, way up high. So we're going to see the top edge. And then fun bonus time, you can put your witch's pet right inside that window. I first just drew a little cat peeking out. You can draw a little kitty if you want. Witches have crows, witches have raccoons and frogs and all kinds of interesting creatures. So you can just pick a little animal friend, draw them inside there. And this window is protected by another kind of dormer coming out. So right above this window, I'm going to start with that shape that comes out and away from my roof. And I'll give it a little thickness. And go all the way around the window. And then it'll connect right back up 
into the main roof right there. Let's work on the landscaping a little bit here and come down to the bottom part of my image. And we're going to put in this pathway right from the stairs so that you know you walk right up the stairs. You don't have to draw a straight pathway, you can make it curve. Just remember that we're not making a path like this that goes curving up and down. We want to make it go side to side, very flat, side to side. That's the kind of feeling we want right there. So when I go from my stairway, I'm going to come out maybe, and then go maybe this way, and then maybe go this way again. Very, very short, very squished. And I take the other side. Make the other side of the path. Something like that. But witch houses tend to be a little bit overgrown, so we might have some grass or some different kinds of weeds growing along the path. You don't have to think about it too much. Just go bounce, bounce, bounce with your pen. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Maybe over here, maybe over there. What you want to watch out for, of course, is you don't want to make them even. So you don't want to go, there's the grass, there's the grass. There's the grass, because then we start looking like a factory. It looks fake. And we want it to be wild and free and organic. We talked about grouping way back in story art class, where we tend to want to group things together. So I have a little group of grass there, a little group of grass over here. But they look different. Don't make them the same. Let's say you want to introduce a new plant. You can do that. You can have a group of whatever this plant is over here. Maybe another group of that plant over here. But we don't want to go boop, 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 boop. It'll just make it look too uniform. Then near the base of the house, add also some little grass type things, or if you prefer, you can have like some rocks, maybe at the base, maybe this house is made out of stone, you can start sketching out some stone shapes. Of course, what are we not going to do? We are not going to make stones that are all the same size all the way across, like pearls or like beads on a necklace. We want to try to make some tall and skinny and some short and fat and some are kind of sideways. Give it more character. And maybe this house is a little bit on a hill so we can just sketch out where we want this ground line to go. Maybe that way. Maybe there's some grass over here and it goes down. Just connect up your lines again. And then we're going to add just two more areas of plants. In my original one, I have trees very, very far away. So I use the lighter touch and I'm just drawing the tops of the trees. And then over here I have a plant design that I don't put anywhere else in my drawings, only in that section. So you can do that also. You don't have to copy my strange little circle plant there. You can make whatever plant you want. But we're just going to use it in that one area to kind of help bring our attention more to the house. If you put a really, really, really great flower down here, you're starting to split people's attention. They don't know, am I supposed to look at the house? Am I supposed to look at the plant? So put all the interesting things kind of near the house. So maybe this time I'll do some kind of like giant sunflowers or something, something kind of neat. 
Doesn't even have to be a real flower, though. You can make something up from your imagination. Totally fine. So we're just going to have it in this one area. And you have to draw more than one. Remember, grouping. You can't have a group of one. That would be a very lonely group. And some treetops way off in the distance. So light. I'm not even finishing my lines. It's just a very, very faint indication that there's something back there. I don't know what, but there's something. And if you filled up your hill with all kinds of plants, don't forget your path also you might have a couple of little rocks or just some lines to show that this is dirt, not grass. You can put any kind of marks in here that are different so that whoever looks at your drawing knows, oh, that path has some different stuff on it than all the grass. going to start adding texture to the roof. But before we do, I'm going to show you your options. There's two kinds of texture that artists can use. One is visible and the other is tangible or what would be tangible. So let's say I've got my roof here. It kind of looks like a witch's hat. Oops, curls on that end. So visual texture would be something like a pattern, like a grid. So let's say I did this and did my contour lines, kind of like cross contour. There we go. That's one way to show a roof. It's just visual. It's very quick and easy. The other way is tangible texture, meaning that we would have to change our outline to show that there are shingles that are overlapping one another, so we'll have to make this all bumpy. Doesn't have to be even, just bumpy. A little bit like a Christmas tree. And then we connect those bumpiness, those bumps on the side, to one another. Show the rows of shingles. If you find that the sides are uneven, that's okay. There's maybe just an extra shingle sticking out there. Adds to the whimsy. Then you'd have to come back in and start separating out the shingles and make them uneven. So instead of just drawing a line down the whole thing, I start staggering my lines. Make them look more like shingles. like a brick pattern almost. Of course, you don't want to get too even, so you might stick in a couple of tiny shingles every once in a while just to break up that uniform pattern. 
put. And then, because you're a glutton for punishment, you would draw the thickness on the bottom of each shingle. So basic little rectangles on the bottom is each of these shapes. Whoa. I'm just going to go fast here so you can kind of see what it looks like. Now, which one is more impressive? Obviously this one. Which one was more work? Obviously this one. So you can choose whichever type of roof texture you want to do. If you want to go for quick and easy, just go for that grid pattern. And you might, you know, throw in just a little shadow here and there and that's fine. Everybody knows it's a roof. If you want to go for impressive, you might want to put in the extra work of doing all the shingles. That's up to you. So I'm going to give you five minutes on your own, then check in, see where we are. Just about two more minutes. If you went for the easier roof and you're all done, you can start adding in some of the extras like a little weather vane or a little broom leaning somewhere, a laundry line, or other things you think a witch might need.
And time is just about up. Even if you're still working on your roof, that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and look at what's going on with the underside here. We're going to have a couple of support beams sticking out. And you can make these like cylinders or you can make them rectangular. That's up to you. We're going to have a couple sticking out here. And you can either put straw sticking out everywhere, kind of give it a furry appearance, or if you'd rather have just these like crossbars that we did on that part of the roof, you can also do that. Or you can just color it in black. This time I'm going to go for the crossbars since I didn't do it last time. Like that. Just basically showing this going right behind there, right behind there and right behind there. And if you wanted to show a support beam coming in front, you'd have to have that squished oval sticking right underneath those shingles. You can stick in a couple of those if you want. Next, I'm going to work on this chimney a little bit more. You can see it has kind of a giraffe spot texture in this one, but if you want to do just regular bricks or regular stones, that's fine. But you have to put some kind of marking on it or else it just looks too plain when it's right next to that house or that uh, roof that is so detailed. But we can keep it simple so it doesn't take the spotlight away from the roof that you just spent so long doing. We'll just put in some general shapes here. Just remember if you're going around a corner, we have to match this angle. It's like upside down check mark. So there's my long line and then my check mark has to angle. I'll just stick in some stones here and there. If she's got something cooking on the fire, you might want a little smoke or a little steam coming out. And then you may or may not have this bottom part of the chimney. Sometimes those have some different brickwork just to have a more solid foundation. So I'm going to put down some lines that are a little bit more like bricks, a little more sturdy. Also just gives another texture, a little more variety. And in the original, I had another little sort of lean-to roof to keep the wood pile dry. That's what this was supposed to be. If you want to add that, you can go ahead. I don't think I have room on this drawing, so I think I'll leave it out. But if you want to draw it, go ahead. Got a little support stick there, a lean-to roof, and some ovals to represent logs. We've got about five more minutes for the class. Let's see. If you'd like to do a stone texture on the walls, I basically took my pen and I pretended I was an Etch-a-Sketch. Remember those? Never no. took my pen off the paper. And I'd have to just go around super lightly. I'm just dragging my pen around. Can you quickly tell me what Etch-a-Sketch is, please? Oh, sure. Toy Story? Uh, no. You know in Toy Story there's that red rectangle that has white knobs? 
No. No, you didn't watch Toy Story? Oh, wait, no, wait. Oh, never mind. I remember him now. Yeah, and you had to rotate those little knobs to guide the little drawing apparatus. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think See, I'm going to I'm going to get going right now, but I wanted to show mine before we go. Yeah, show it. Show yeah, it. for sure. Show us. Let me go ahead and spotlight your video. Hey, look at that roof. Very nice. Oh, Get it in focus. Right. Sorry about how blurry it is. I was hoping it would focus. Oh, yeah, yeah pull it, put it right there next you to your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, there she is in the sky coming home. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you put her in there. I have an extra broom there, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, you know, sometimes two cars in the garage, two brooms. That makes sense. <laughs> she has a roommate. Yeah. <laughs> and your broom has a has a shadow. That's yeah. that's very cool. Oh yeah. I'm glad you could see that, Kristen. I'm glad you could see that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm now putting one on mine. Rushed on the. Oh yeah, I'm putting one on mine too now. <laughs> and you made a really neat top on yours. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Betsy. If anybody wants to show theirs real quick, I know you're still working on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, it's about time to wrap it up and start sharing. So, <laughs> who else is ready to share? Mine isn't finished. Yours isn't finished? Let's see how far you got. Okay, not not all that far. But... Not all that far, but hey, I see that roof detail. I like the roof. Uh, oh, that's the path, too. Path of the rocks. But there's a lot of blank space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can need one. where to leave your blank space, I think. Yeah, yeah but Stephanie. not that oh, much. Stephanie. <laughs> not that much. <laughs> Everybody tried the shingle. Broom yeah. Too. The broom too. Yeah. Yeah, everybody did the shingles. Cool. Oh, you have a really nice rabbit. Yeah. Chimney yeah. is great. I love your brick chimney. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. Those Fun. are cool. Fun. Cool. It looks like my roof is coming off though. Like it got cut. <laughs> and off. Dude, that's okay. <laughs> it's whimsical. <laughs> that's why it's whimsical, <laughs> right? What have you got, Mikey? Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Hurt the Michaela. Yeah, yep, I'm here. Uh, have you got something? Yeah, share. No. No? Nothing to share? Okay. okay. Maybe next class. Thanks, Betsy. You're very welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Next yeah. class. Way fun. Oh, hey, oh, hey Christian, are you going to be in the next class? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll stop drawing this thing. Even though it has a lot yep, time of to grab work some to colored go. pencils. I know you, you start and you don't want to. Oh, I can add a line here. How about this? <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, everybody puts the witch in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I already had the broom up against the house, but I like the witch in the sky, definitely. Oh, she could have a spare broom. She could have a spare broom. They did, they did that. Yeah, and why not? My, my roof thing is, you know, I don't know how it's fitting from the front to the back like that, but it is. <laughs> Magic. Magic. Just a high wind. <laughs> how about an eraser? It'll come right back. <laughs> well, officially, you have two more minutes. Oh, good. Betsy. Yeah. Did I do my banner right? I wanted to do a banner. I'm practicing banners and stairs. I'm not letting me scare, mm -hmm. letting them scare me. But I couldn't remember where you put the dark spots or the lines. You got it right, but your um, curves are going a little bit too much up and down and not enough side to side. Got it. That's what it was. Okay. Thank exactly, you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly what we did with our path too. We wanted to yeah. I tried to make. Curtains in the window, but I got one looking good, but the rest look like dead hot dogs. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do there. I think side to side, make it side to side. I didn't get and my you weather shadow, You shadow the under curves, right? Oh, yeah, no yeah. weather rain. I'll even practice that, so that's what I can put up in the sky. Yeah, you weather. want to go more side to side, and then wherever there's a curve. Curve, a line, okay. I'm working on the windows and walls. Oh, yeah, that's. I can just remember. Okay. Got it. Yeah, right. 
And you can darken whichever side you want. One more minute. Where? Oh, you guys want to see a Lego set being done? A Harry? Yeah, King? let's see it. Oh, in the back here. Oh, you can bring it up here? Okay. Got 883 parts. Wow. Hey. Oh, look at that. 878 parts. Oh, That's my gosh. Story. Can you tip it a little without it spilling? Just a little. A little forward. There we go. Oh. Nice. Oh, is, is that the... Oh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Together. With every penny. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, five o'clock. I'll have to end it here and see you guys over in fairy class. Thank you. You're right. Yes, and on. Be right there.